My name is Ryan Clutterbuck. I'm the head coach of our women's national team program. my background, I had the opportunity to work with our uh, Canadian women's national team in 2017 as the offensive coordinator and was fortunate, privileged enough to be uh, welcomed back for this tournament here in 2022. Our goal for Finland really is to, is to max out. We want to find out how good of a football program we have and how great we can be. And I think if we achieve those goals, we can be the best team in the world. But it's not going to happen unless we maximize our potential. And today is just one step on the road to those goals. That's an exciting step too. great athletes, we've got a mix of, of veteran experience and some, some youthful enthusiasm and we're just so thrilled to, to see how they compete today. I think I speak for our coaches when I say this weekend was a tremendous success. Uh, we had 136 players in camp. And over three days, we had to make some very difficult decisions. So there were very competitive periods over the first two days. We got a lot of reps. We played a lot of football. We met a lot. We've been talking about nothing but football for the last 72 hours. And really happy with the, the red and white teams we've assembled. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final day of the inaugural Under-18 Football Canada Women's National Championship. My name is Chris Hattisbeck. I'm joined by Dan Plaster here for our final day at beautiful Mosaic Stadium. Dan, thank you for joining us. Oh, this is going to be a blast. Uh, thank you for giving me the call for this and just to be a part of the inaugural tournament, national tournament like this, this is this is going to be a fun day. Warm, yes. but fun. Yeah, it is a hot one here on the turf at Mosaic Stadium. It's about 32 degrees outside, so getting close to that 40 degrees on the turf. Uh, first game of the day, we've got four games set up, our three kind of mini games, followed by our gold medal game tonight at 7 o'clock Saskatchewan time. First game, we see the fifth place team, Team Manitoba, taking on the third place team, Team Ontario. Should be a good game, uh, setting up the round robin. Uh, over the past two uh, two days here at the tournament, so uh, teams fighting for bronze here. And I, I like the round robin jamboree style play as well for this six on six tournament. Um, I know it's tough not getting all the provinces in, and we know 
Quebec will probably come in at some point and just dominate everybody, but that's coming at a later date. But this is a, a great way to, to give everybody a flavor and everybody a chance on that final day of football. Yeah, we talked a little bit um, over the first few days about how awesome it is to see Team Ontario here, first time at a women's tournament. So great way to start the day here as Team Manitoba kicks off to, to Ontario. Team Ontario will pick it up, number three. Going to the right side there. Has a lane, breaks one tackle. Finally brought down at about the 52-yard line by Team Manitoba. Number three, Callie Dory on the return for Team Ontario, and they'll start their first drive. And that is a great start for Team Ontario. Um, lots of room on that right side. Looked like it was nicely set up for that return, and it's going to be a very interesting first two-thirds of this uh, Jamboree-style tournament for Manitoba because they got the back-to-back -back games off the hop. Yeah, you know, we talked about the heat and and a little bit shorter bench than, than maybe some of the other teams, so they're going to fight through it, though. We're looking forward to it as uh, number 11, Marie Sartorio for Team Ontario here, lines up in the shotgun for the first play. Marie take the pass, look to her left to Cam Zimlinski. She has lots of room on the left side there. Going towards that sign, finally brought down there by number, sorry, I'll have to check that on the replay. I believe that's number seven, Mary Grace Ularde. And again, apologies for any pronunciation issues. We're going to do our best. I think you're going to be saying Sartorio to Zemlinski a lot yes. because it's been a lot all tournament. And Sartorio, even just by listening to your calls earlier this week and watching some of the games, might be the best quarterback in the tournament. Yeah, I think uh, she's probably got the best passing stats for sure. Team Ontario has been putting it in the air a lot, and they've had a lot of success. They won't have any issues with the win today, so I expect them to be throwing a lot again. It's one of those days there wish there was a win. That's right. First and 10 here for Marie. Looking deep over the middle as we talk about going in the air again. That time to Zelinski, but this one will fall incomplete. Great defense by Team Manitoba to just kind of split the difference right there on that jump ball, but also smart not to take that pass interference because that is also the troubles on a on a jump ball. Yeah, they did a great job there looking back to the ball, kind of playing it, backpedaling, and uh, nice coverage on the play. Brings up second and 10, ball on the 45 for Marie Sartorio again in the gun. She's got three to the right. Take the snap. Looking right to Zemlinski right away on kind of a quick screen pass. Lots of room out there. Team Manitoba has to make that tackle. She doesn't. Zemlinski has lots of room. She's going to split the defenders. And she's going to take this all the way for a Team Ontario touchdown. What great blocking on that play and that far right wide receiver that was able to get that final block. As you see coming up on that far side, that's... I believe that's number 80, uh, number 80 Dalen Pelly. Great block by Pelly to Springs and Linsky uh, loose and get that first score on the board. Yeah, you know, they did a good job there, Team Ontario, just getting the ball quick to their playmaker, as we talked about. She's been she's been seeing a lot of those passes over the last uh, few days and does what she does best there, gets it in her hands and takes it all the way. And uh, Sartorio, she had just four completions against Manitoba in their first game. It was a victory, and it was a tight game. Looks like same play here again on the convert, and Zemlinski's going to take that in for a one-point convert. Oh. Just got in. Yeah, just got in. So, again, just a reminder for those of you that maybe didn't have the opportunity to watch the first two days uh, in this tournament, if you run or, or pass a extra point in that is only worth one point as opposed to kicking it, is actually worth two. Those would be the amateur rules, as I, as I, as I would assume. And it's uh, to promote kicking in the game, is it not? It is, yeah. So some, most of the amateur leagues, like you see like in RMF, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, Regina Minor Football in the, in the very amateur leagues, um, they're just trying to promote more kicking, which I think is a great idea. That was a great change that uh, Football Canada made years ago. And, uh, you know, we've seen it come into play over the tournament a couple games uh, within a point or two that would have made a huge difference. And you know what's hard? Kicking. Kicking is hard, <laughs> kicking yes. Kicking is really hard. Yes. I ha the pass, punt, and kick competitions, I got two out of three. That that. Actual, it's not bad. That it's kick not is bad. Just, All right, Maya Lacombe here kicking off to Team Manitoba. Going to have a chance for a good return here. Oh, Breaks great. the tackle. There has is. lots of room on the right side. She's got one defender to beat the kicker who's chasing her from behind. Doesn't look like she's going to catch her. Going to take that all the way for a Team Manitoba touchdown. Delaney Waldner tying, getting that first score for Manitoba and answering right back on special teams. Love to see that.
You see nice job there breaking the tackle and then just using her speed, hitting that sideline. Kind of a little bit of a help from the ref. Love it. You know, a little bit of a nice block there. Uh, they'll take it. And uh, great response from Team Manitoba. That is what they wanted in response to that quick touchdown drive. And six-on-six six football, folks, this is why we love watching this. That's right, yeah. Six aside provides lots of opportunities for, for big plays on specials and on offense. You know, we typically see some higher scoring games with the way this tournament is. It's two 12-minute quarter halves, as we've decided to call it. A um, little bit different, but... So Team Manitoba is going to kick for two here, and that one's going to get uh, blocked or, or off someone's head there, I think, at the line of scrimmage. So that one's going to fall uh, incomplete or no good, sorry, and it will be 6-7 for Team Ontario. But still good for them for going for the convert. That was a great snap, too. And yeah, oh, Nice hit, job yeah. by 24 there for Team Ontario. That's Hannah Martin. Smashing through yep. and getting that block. Yep. And it was a good snap, good hold, and 24 with the nice block on there. So, well, folks, we're... Only, what, a minute 47 in, and uh, we're cooking. Mm. Hope, hope you guys took the over <laughs> yeah, on yeah, this, looking that way so far. And it's yeah, it's it's funny when you, you look at a lot of the games, you're thinking, oh, this is just like some, some basic games. You know, there's some real tight ones. The last time these two teams met, it was 25-16 uh, for Team Ontario over Team Manitoba. So looking at that, I was hoping for a nice tight score. We're getting it so far, and also – Lots of offense. Yeah, you know, one thing, you know, we, we've mentioned the fact that, that Manitoba has a bit of a shorter bench, but, you know, they've been fighting so hard during these games and, and keeping them close, the ones that they have lost. And, you know, they're relying on a, on a handful of players to really carry the load for them, and, and they've been answering the whole time. And I think that's, I would say that goes for almost every team here. You have your great players, especially offensively, and smart just for the returner to fall on it because it was turning into a bit of adventure there. Yeah, Manitoba was getting downfield pretty quick there, so a good job just to fall on it and, and give your ball to the offense there. Yeah, again, Dory, the the returner on that one, she returned that first. It was a win off 56. Um, yeah, Ben Marshall. Marshall yeah, yeah, and then Dory, smart, jumps on it. She had a great return on the opening kickoff, and I think she probably wanted some more. So Marisa Torrio here going to start second drive of the day so far for Team Ontario. She's got three to the left this time. We'll see if they go back to the air. Looks like Marie will set up the pass here. This time looking left. Going to throw it over the middle this time to number three, Cali Dory. Great coverage by Team Manitoba there. Again, some great defense by Manitoba. Their defense keeping them in there, and it's Ulawadare. Ulawa Day. I'm going to mess that up, and I apologize yep. to Mary Grace and her family. Mary Grace from Vincent Massey Collegiate in Winnipeg. Great coverage there by Mary Grace. Brings up second and 10, ball on the 37. Team Ontario again lines up, three receivers to the left. Marie will take the pass, roll out, a little bit of half roll, has to step back in, throw it over the middle again, this time again, I believe that's to, uh, I believe number three again, Cali Dory, we'll have to check on the replay there, it is, um, but going to fall incomplete that time. And it looked like it was uh, some, some decent coverage by the linebacker in 34, Chloe Spencer Naren. she was dri drifting back as well, looks like she might have got a hand on it, but again, solid defense, and to get that two and out, for Team Manitoba, especially after getting that kickoff return touchdown. That is a tone setter. Myla Combe here on the punt has to pick it up and is pressured because of the bad snap, and the refs are going to blow that one dead. Good call by the officials there. Very good. It gets dangerous, and especially when you have somebody looking up, and I know it doesn't matter what league it is. There are people that like to take advantage of yes. certain situations like that, but... Special teams coming through again for Team Manitoba as they're able to force that short punt and also get that kickoff return touchdown. Now their first turn on offense. So number one, Jada Bolton lining up for their first drive. She's got her, her two main running backs in the backfield, number 47, Peyton Tursky, and 88, McKenna Hampson, two workhorses for Team Manitoba here. She'll turn and hand it off to McKenna right away up the middle, breaks one tackle, and gets a good five or six yards on that play. This is going to be two very different offenses from what I've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, almost polar opposites, actually. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Team Manitoba is going to keep that ball on the ground, and it's some nice blocks there. By, great offensive yeah, line. Yeah, number 47, that's Peyton Tursky, her fullback, and I believe 49, Harley Rourke there by the, from the Eastside Eagles. Nice job. Brings up second and six. 
even having the three down offensive linemen on six on six here, keeping it tight. Yeah, that time hands it off to Tursky, lowers her shoulders, probably gets about three or four. Going to bring up third down here. I expect Team Manitoba to go for this here. Two of my favorite offenses. I love an old school option, and I love something that looks like air raid. And, and you I got both. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm all in. Yeah, we got both. Team Manitoba, uh, you know, they're kind of their standard formation is that I form. Get Peyton Tursky the ball or get her lead blocking for McKenna. And uh, nice job there. Um, didn't get as much as I thought on that play there. But uh, going to be third and three here. Team Manitoba will go for it. They line up in that I form. Jada Bolton ready to take the snap. Turns in kind of a half toss. Has issues on the toss, though. Going to have to pick that up. And Jada Bolton takes a hit there. The quarterback, nice job by Team Ontario to, to get a big tackle in the backfield. There is a flag down, I believe. Looks like it might have got picked up, though, so that will bring up a turnover on downs for Team Ontario. And tough on the exchange between the quarterback and the running back, as as you, as you saw Jada Bolton, the quarterback. I don't know if we can't place blame on anybody, but that's just a tough, yeah. tough offensive play, especially with great field position. Great job by the Team Ontario defense there to take advantage of that issue on the toss. We'll bring up their third offensive drive here. For those of you that want to check out the stats, they are being updated live, reginarams.com slash stats. And thanks to Regina Rams staff for helping out too. Everybody on board on this tournament here in beautiful Regina and beautiful Mosaic Stadium. All right, so Torio here taking the snap. Zemlinski coming across the formation. They're going to hit her this time. Great coverage by Mary Grace there from Team Manitoba. Love it. She has been the stalwart on defense. It looks like all tournament long as uh, she usually leads Manitoba in tackles. And that one, she sniffed that one out in a hurry. Press coverage right off the hop. She stepped right in into Zemlinski and forced that play to such short yardage, actually a loss of one, yeah. and now, but that might set something up for Ontario as you see Zemlinski turn and go upfield. She is going to throw this time deep downfield to, I believe that's number 80 for Team Ontario, Dalen Pelly. There are flags down. I believe uh, one of the Ontario receivers might have been offside, though. Decline that, get the ball back. Yep, great start for Manitoba here. You know, they gave up that touchdown on the first drive, but since then, a couple big plays on specials couple two and outs and they're kind of rolling here see if their offense can get going great defensively as well that's, that's what I love seeing when you know your offense is, but it's only one drive for that offense but they're gonna take the nope they decline the penalty yeah yep. as we wait for a very familiar face in these parts and Rob Isbister is the head referee so you see him right there we'll do our best to uh Announce the calls for you guys as they come up. So as you mentioned, Dan, they will decline that penalty, bring up third and 12, and Team Ontario is going to punt back to Team Manitoba. Um, well, looks like they might be keeping their offense on the field, actually. Marisa Torrio is staying in here. We'll see if she chooses to kick it or, or throw it downfield here. She is going to throw, this time to the right, to her running back, Myla Combe, but she's going to get brought down way short of that first down marker. And stepping up and making that tackle right away for Team Manitoba and just keeping everything in front of them, especially in front of that first down marker. And it is number nine, Delaney Waldner with the tackle. She had the kickoff return yeah. touchdown and makes a great force in the turnover on downs. Doing it on both teams and defense there. Uh, you know, a little bit of an interesting decision by Ontario early in the game, but they trusted their offense there. But Team Manitoba makes a big stop and gives it back to Jada Bolton here. Ready for the snap. We'll turn and hand it off to McKenna Hampson off the left side. Has a lead blocker in Tursky. Cuts inside of her. Great block. Yeah, great job by the fullback there, Tursky, and gets a good eight yards on that play. That is the way you start off a drive after forcing a turnover just get your solid eight yards and now if you just have two more carries for two more yards that's all that matters yeah and wow great block off the hop <laughs> and another another putting love people it. on the ground awesome job by Peyton Tursky there she's been playing great all tournament and and keeps it going on that drive on that first play sorry brings up second and two ball in the 38 Turn and hand it off to Tursky this time. And she stood up, I think, right around that first down marker. I think they're going to give it to her. And a rough exchange, but still made things happen. Moved the chains. You don't ask how. And that's what they did. And uh, hobbling just a little bit is Tursky as uh, she slowly gets back to the huddle. And it's either going to be her left or her right. Or, as you said, Hampson left or Hampson yeah. right. We're just going to see how this goes. Good job by that Team Manitoba O-line as well, getting some... Some blockers downfield there doing a good job. A little bit of a trouble on the snap again. We'll turn it off and hand it to Hampson. Oh. And big tackle there by Team Ontario. Yeah, they 
were able to shed and step into Hampson and just stop that run right away. I believe number 50, Gabrielle Chartrand on the tackle there. Chartrand from Ottawa, Patrice Deloge. And another Cumberland Panthers, that's uh, the blue helmets. You see a lot of them out there from Ontario. Yes, and uh, the, that's uh, a big program in Ontario and it's, they probably should have just brought that whole team there, but. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So Team Manitoba there turns and tosses the Hamps to the right side, but Team Ontario with a big tackle for a loss of a couple yards there is going to bring up third and long. As I say that, it is an all, it is an all Cumberland Panthers defense. Yeah, all blue helmets. That's all right. blue helmets, yeah. and yeah. Uh, with the black numbers on red, that doesn't help us very much. As, no. As it looks like Violet Kirk, one of the defensive linemen, taking a knee right now. Hopefully she'll be okay. You mentioned, Dan, that we're here at beautiful Mosaic Stadium. I know uh, that the uh, all the teams were lucky enough to have the opportunity to go to the game last night. Um, thankfully, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders getting them tickets, having them hold the Canadian and the Saskatchewan flag, and uh, getting some seats there. They showed them on the on the Maxtron here at Mosaic Stadium, and I think the girls all had a great time. And that is one of the, the cool relationships in Canada is the relationship between the Sask Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Football Saskatchewan and Football Canada. And it's not just the Riders, a lot of other teams are able to have great relationships as well with their local provincial football branches. That's a great punt. That's a great punt. Manitoba here is going to try and go for the Rouge. We'll see if it's going to roll out the back. It won't. Maya Lacombe is going to pick that up deep in the end zone and try and bring it out. She has lots of room to the left side here. Going to make this uh -oh. person miss. She has one more to beat and she could be oh, gone. Great but a tackle. great tackle there, I believe. That's number 47, the fullback herself, Peyton Tursky. <gasps> Wow, one more person for Lacombe to beat, and that would have been a touchdown, but great tackle by, by Tursky, as you said. Wow. Punted the ball, awesome punt. That was Needed a, a punt. couple extra yards to get it out the back, but a great punt, and then saves a potential touchdown there for Maya Lacombe. And it was Lacombe that had that punt single to win the game against Ontario 7-6. That's right, punter on punter there. Oh, I don't like punter on punter crime. Nope, nope. <laughs> All right, Team Ontario is going to start. Marisa Torrio, first and 10, ball on the 27-yard line. Ontario up one point here. Three minutes, three and a half minutes left in the first quarter half. She's going to take that snap. Zelinski looking like she was going to come across. Flag down on the play. She's looking right to Lacombe. That one's going to fall incomplete. We'll see what the flag is here, Dan. And a great push by the Manitoba defensive line. Maybe they got a little bit of a, a jump on that. We'll wait and see what the... Nope. Yeah, it might have been... Uh, they just split. Great rush by Shayla Mohammed to get to the quarterback very quickly on this. But it is a penalty against Manitoba. Yeah, they are going to be calling someone offside there. So Team Ontario is going to take that free five yards and move up for first and five. Mm. And that was a tough break for Manitoba because it was such a great defensive play. You know, one thing that we've been super impressed with during this tournament is the, the lack of flags, you know. Uh, we see Sotario here just hand it off inside to Zemlinski at the time. Nice job, nice one-on-one -on -one tackle there from Manitoba. And again, just stepping up and the making Mary the Grace Mary again. Grace. Yep. Yeah. Uluwarde again, if it's pronounced wrong. We're, we have to say her name Uluwarde, once. yes, because so. she is, that was easily, I would say her third tackle. And she has a knockdown as well. So it's she, it looks like she's shadowing Zemlinski as well. I think that might be what we are seeing a lot of, and that's what we are seeing. Yeah, it looks like she's bounced out left there to cover Zemlinski as Zemlinski comes inside a little bit. It's going to stay out there to the right for Sartorio. Second and five here. This time Marie's going to look deep over the middle. Two Zemlinski got two receivers, and that one is going to fall oh. incomplete. Looks like she, uh, receiver, almost had a chance at that one, but does fall to the ground. And uh, so close. That was that's a great number three, play. Number three, Callie Dory there. That. I think Zemlinski had a shot at it as well. Yeah, might have uh, been an issue there with a couple of the routes, you know. Two receivers in the exact same spot, and uh, that one's going to fall incomplete. So we saw Team Ontario. We just have a Team Ontario player down on a knee here. Um, we'll try and get the number for you here. Uh, we see Team Ontario go for it on third and about 12. So, you know, third and five on the 33-yard line, I wouldn't be surprised if they keep their offense on here. I think you might not see them punt a lot in this game. Uh, in six-on-six, you see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what level of six on six you see. That's a lot of the time the punter does stay on the field unless you have a leg like Tursky and you could just bomb it yeah. from wherever because she 
when she hammered that 30-yard single for the win yesterday over Team Ontario, and she darn near put it through the end zone, and she punted that from the 35. So unless you have a strong leg like that, I would just roll the dice, especially how well Ontario's defense is playing. It was number three for Team Ontario, Callie Dory, that was being looked at by the trainers, but she's up and walking on her own strength to the sideline. It looks like she should be okay. As we mentioned, is it is hot out there. It's early in this game still, and I think the uh, the teams might be thankful that it's only two 12-minute quarters for these first few mini games. I, I would be as well, because if you had to play the full, that would be a... That would be awful. That'd be, yeah, it's going to be a hot one. We got the only full length game today is the gold medal game between Team Alberta and Team Saskatchewan. That will be four full 12 minute corners, but that one's not till 7 o'clock. So we'll see if it cools down or not. The team should be in the shade by then. But, you know, it's going to be tough for these teams, especially we mentioned Team Manitoba here about to play a back to back game. So, And so far they are playing well. And it'll be interesting to see the rotation of especially the the linemen we see a lot of Shayla Mohammed you see her on the right defensive end side of things and they are going for it is Team Ontario right so Sartorio going to the left going to try and get it with her feet this time she does stays on that sideline and finally pushed out of bounds there downfield by number nine I believe that's for Team Manitoba uh, delayed New Waldner but not before Marie Sartorio gets a first down once she slipped that little bit of contain she had a lot of open space as you see her find that left side of the defense and was able to get out of the reach of one tackler and then finally driven out of bounds after that pickup of 15 yards. So we mentioned Team Ontario expecting them to go for it. They do. They get a big first down. Just over a minute left in this first uh, first quarter here at Mosaic Stadium. Team Ontario only up one good game so far. I like this. It's great, especially when we've seen some gigantic plays as we've seen Jimlinski with that long touchdown and then we saw Waldner with that long kickoff return touchdown. Back-to-back -back plays and that's where we that's why we we're, we're at right now. Looking over the middle this time again. Nice coverage on the play and it's almost intercepted by Team Manitoba, but that one's going to fall incomplete. They had a great chance at a big play there. That is your prototypical tip drill. That is, yeah. And as uh, Sartorio had the wide open play and just in and out of the hands of Pearl Inglis looking for that INT and I think she saw a lot of green in, ahead of her, and she thought she, she might have had a chance to really flip the tables here in this game. We see Sartorio putting the ball in her receiver's hands, giving him a good chance at making some plays there. She's playing great so far today. Brings up second and 10, ball in the 47. As Sartorio lines up in the gun. This time she's got one to the left, two to the right. Going to take it and has a lead blocker. Looks like they're going to keep it off the left side again that time, but only gets a few yards there. Good job by Manitoba. Yeah, really sealed off uh, again. This time it is Shayla Muhammad again. She was just able to slide along and force things and slow things down until she got help by Spencer Naren as well. As you, she kind of ate up that block right there, forced the blocker into the quarterback, and uh, a great play just to stretch that out. And that's what you always want to do defensively, just stretch it out and, until you get some help. Exactly. You know, with the fact we are playing six-a-side football, just again, the dimensions on the field today, 40 yards wide by 110 long. Um, from As I understand it, normally uh, six-a-side football is only 100 yards long, but being the fact that we're here at Mosaic on the turf, uh, they are going to go with the full 110. So, you know, these girls are working hard uh, as uh, Team Manitoba here takes a timeout before the end of this first quarter and uh, we mentioned of course the, with the heat here today a little bit different than the first two times they played it was, it's been nice weather here at uh, Regina all week but a little bit muggier here today yeah after all the rain last weekend you guys had to deal with especially a little bit on the Sunday and then it it warmed up a titch on Wednesday and now you're gonna get a full dose of it and was as we said Manitoba gets the back-to-backs um, so smart right now to just you know, call a timeout, let that last 30 seconds go of the quarter half, and then reset. And then that second half will be, it's going to be interesting. I'm interested to see what happens in that second half. If Manitoba steps it up and is able to get some sort of lead on Ontario, they could carry that momentum into that second game as well. So there's those are some of the things that you have to think about here, especially in in. in when you're when you're doing these third place jamboree type of things. All right, so as expected here, Ontario will go for it on third and eight. Ball on the 49 yard line. Sartorio lines up in that gun formation this time. They've got two people, two blockers on the line. We'll see if they look to keep it on the ground this time. They will throw it out right to Zelinski inside. She's going to cut inside. Nice block by wow. one of her receivers. Cuts it all the way left inside. Cuts back in and finally brought down. I believe that's by Pearl Inglis there on Team Manitoba, but not after a big game. And again, Zelinski, great athlete, but also. Watch her vision. 
She's able to get the able to get past the linebacker there, but also get one last block as Waldner was able to stretch it out a little bit. But great vision and speed to get that first down. You know that's kind of been their their go-to play when they need some yards, and Zeminski does the rest herself. Latorio does a great job of getting the ball in her hands quickly and letting her run with it. Big first down here for Team Ontario. One minute ten or first and ten here with uh, no time left in this first quarter half. The time does not switch over, so sorry, it does. So they're going to go deep here downfield. That one's going to fall and play another great throw from Sartorio, though. Sartorio has got an arm and has been so close to punching in on a couple of those plays. And so Team Ontario will keep the ball, so they don't actually. That's great. Yeah, so they'll, they'll have second 10 here, and uh, so they'll get to keep their field position. They'll just switch sides and, and get back at it here after the two-minute break. Now I understand the quarter half. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> We've been debating all week what to call it. I, I, I like quarter half. Yeah, you don't, you, don't, you, do, you don't shut her down. You don't have another kickoff. You just keep it going. And, and I'm okay with that. And it's and it's interesting to see you watch both of these teams as Manitoba takes a knee in the dead sun yeah. and Ontario retreats well, to he, any. Is there even shade? I down think there? there's a little bit with the high walls here at Mosaic Stadium. There's a little bit of shade there right against the wall. So you know, Team Ontario earning that third place position and earning a little bit of shade here, uh, a little bit of reprieve from the sun here, just for a couple minutes before they get back at it. And if I was a parent of either team I'd be on the field sliding those benches ever so closer I would be on either sideline at least um, but it, it, it that was great I, the two big plays Jimlinski and then the kickoff return by Waldner that habit in a span of 30 seconds and that's that's the quality of athletes you have on the field the quality of football and for a first ever tournament this is incredible for the quality of football that you see on, on your screen right now. Yeah, you know, we mentioned that this is the inaugural under-18 Canada Football Canada, sorry, Women's National Championship here at Mosaic Stadium in Regina as our uh, wonderful stats people here gives us some gives us some live updates here. So uh, Team Ontario, Maurice Artorio, uh passing the ball, 6 for 13 for 86 yards and a touchdown, a long of 45. She's been slinging it out there today. Uh, and we expected that. Um, she, We talked about her more than likely being the best quarterback in this tournament and you also said this is the type of offense that they love to play and and good for team ontario to open it up like that when you have an athlete at quarterback and then you have a, a couple of athletes in dory and zumlinski and, and, and that sort of thing if you're able to get it into their hands and able to get enough protection for sartorio to throw the ball that is where you have a lot of fun with that style of offense in six on six with the two linemen and three receivers. Other side, this is between the hash marks, just pound the ball. Yeah, yep. when when I mean I'm gonna sell. I I am a dinosaur, and when I say three yards in a cloud of dust, that is, or three yards in a cloud of rubber pellets. <laughs> That's right. Yep. And that is what Team Manitoba plays, but. So in your travels, is that kind of indicative of how Manitoba football plays? Like even in the higher levels, are they that style of football or do they like to open it up at the higher levels? Yeah, so again, for those of you that don't know, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast uh, a couple days ago, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be the head coach for the Regina Riot, the women's football team here in Regina, the Western Women's Canadian Football League. So, you know, we've we played Manitoba, the Manitoba Fearless here a couple times this year. And, uh, you know, they're, they're typically a team that keeps it on the ground with their big line. Great job, great running back there, Cali, um, or Hallie Aggie, sorry. Um, so it, it's not surprising to see them doing it, that at the minor levels too, but Team Ontario here going to start the second quarter half, first and 10, ball in the 45. A little bit of a trouble that time, Sotario on the snap, but she's going to keep it herself, run off the left side. Going to make one person miss, but she does a good job there. I believe that's number nine. Um, who is that again? I think that's Delaney Waldner doing a nice job limiting that gain. As, as it's basically their, their defense is, has really kept them in there, just a little bit of a mistake on that play as Sartorio showing her speed to bail her herself out of trouble because mm -hmm. I think she looked up at the play and saw something before the ball got there but uh, it's great it, it, that was a solid play by the quarterback but yeah you, I love that team Manitoba thing that you talked about almost like a system yep. almost like you are a club system but the club is the province I love that yeah lots of east side eagles here on this team Manitoba team as uh 
Maurice Otorio is going to take that snap again. Again, looking to run this time. Going to keep it on the ground. Nice tackle there by Team Manitoba. Great job. We'll have to catch the number on that. I believe that might be number 34, uh, or 31, sorry, Pearl Inglis on the tackle with a big turnover. And again, watch the defensive lineman here, number 94, Georgia Pilgrim. She was responsible for all of that as she was able to force everything to the outside, almost cut things off as well to let Inglis make that tackle. And from what I've noticed here, especially when you just have the two defensive linemen as you're only facing two offensive mm -hmm. linemen, that's a lot of stress on contain in six on six. Pearl Inglis, again, for those of you that don't know, was Team Manitoba's defensive player of the day on day two. On offense, they had McKenna Hampson. Uh, no big surprise there as their offense is ready to go here. That time in the split back, and to hand it off to McKenna Hampson off the left side. Nice block by Peyton Tursky. Ontario doing a good job, though, limiting that to about three yards. And Peyton Robertson, the offensive line on the left side, also just a little bit of a hold-up block. As you see her just get her hands on the back of 50, yep. just enough to Doesn't put her hands love up. It. Great no, job. I love it. I love that. So um, great block as well by the offensive line. And, and Peyton Robertson on that left side. She knows her job. Team Ontario's MVPs from, from day two were Cam Zielinski on offense. No big surprise there. And yep. Hannah Martin on the D-line. We'll see if Hannah can make a big play here on second and seven. Ball on the 46. Ten minutes left. Going to hand it inside to Peyton Tursky that time. And she gets another three or four hard-earned yards there. Yeah, you mentioned Hannah Martin. And this is obviously what she was expecting. She had ten tackles in that game against Manitoba in their victory over Manitoba. So I, I think... It's going to be a long day for number 24 along the defensive line, but uh, this sets up third and short, and Manitoba has been very hit and miss with this. They've been able to connect once and then get stopped once as we see the power eye again. Yeah, no big surprise. Going to line up in that power eye for him again. Jada Bolton ready to take the snap. Going to turn, hand it off to Peyton Tursky again up the middle, lowers her shoulders, runs a defender over, and gets that first down. That is, from what we have been seeing, this is the textbook way of of getting their yardage as you watch the offensive line just get enough of a chip and a great block by the center in, in uh, 63 Emily Rochot to get the nose tackle pushed up enough to allow that first down smash mouth football yardage. Yeah. Going to line up in that I form again. Peyton Tersky, McKenna Hampson right behind Jada Bolton. This time she's going to turn and hand it off to McKenna Hampson off the right side. Has to split a couple of defenders, keeps her feet going, gets a couple extra yards, but that time only back to the line of scrimmage. She almost had it. She almost split the defensive lineman as uh, Isabel Amble was one of the defensive linemen in right there. As you see her just kind of drape off, and then her linebacker was able to fill on that and Hannah Martin. Yeah, Hannah Martin, you know, that's one thing I've noticed with Hannah Martin during this tournament, just an incredible athlete, great tackler. That's the biggest thing. Sure-handed, and that's especially at the this high school age of football. It does, it, it's, to find a sure-handed tackler is, is rare. All right, Team Manitoba, second and 10 here, gonna turn off the left side this time. Great block by Peyton wow. Tursky. You'll hopefully see that on the replay, but an even better tackle there to prevent that from a first down. That's number 58 for Team Ontario, Ben Marshall. That was, watch this block, folks. It just all comes crashing down. Setting that edge, great job. <laughs> wow, as Isabel Amble got knocked down and the rest of the defense of Team Ontario went with her and it sets up. We've seen this already once in this drive. It is third and one and a half. Yeah, I won't be surprised if they just hand it off to Tursky again, you know, reward her for that block. She did a good job last time getting that first down. We'll see here if Jada will hand it off to her. They will off the left side this time, but pressure in the backfield. She managed to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will be short and it's going to turn this ball over. Isabel Amble, as she was the victim of the last block and she was able to step up this time, has... A little bit of a high snap, but they're able to get it. She sheds her block, and she said, not this time. Able to step up and stop Tursky until help came, and now we have probably the worst thing to happen for Team Manitoba, and that's a player on the field. Yeah, unfortunately, that is 47 Peyton Tursky there. Trainers have come out to, to look at her here. Hopefully she's okay. She's been working so hard during this tournament, wow. blocking on defense, punting. She's doing a little bit of everything. And... It's, fun. It's, it's, it's great. I know you're not going to have Team All-Star or the All-Star team of this tournament, but because everybody, just to make your provincial team is an All-Star. And the way each offense it plays, it's kind of hard to do that anyway. Yes. So we're just, but All-Star right there at running back, fullback for 
Team Manitoba in Peyton Tursky from St. Vitale Mustangs as she slowly makes her way off the field. She's going to get a bit of a blow with the defense coming on, but I don't know what I would do if I was Manitoba. Do you sit her until the next game? But since she's the, the straw that stirs the Manitoba offensive drink, I think that's going to be a no-go. Yeah, it looks she was able to get up uh, off the turf on her own power here pretty quick. I think she's just maybe a little bit exhausted there. Got the water bottle in her hand. Going to go over to the bench for a minute. Hopefully she's all right. As Team Ontario takes the ball back here, first and 10 ball in the 46. Still up one with just over seven minutes left in this game. She's going to turn and toss it this time to Zelinski off the left side. Great tackle by number 31. I believe that's per, or, uh, yeah, Pearl Inglis for Team Manitoba. Defensive MVP from day two making a hell of a tackle. Great. I love the shirt handed tackle as she was able to read that the whole way. And again, we're going to mention Georgia Pilgrim steps up and took on two blockers to make Zemlinski kind of kick out high and gave Inglis enough time to make that tackle. And Manitoba's been playing great today on defense. You know, they gave up that first drive, but since then have been really shutting things down. Says Sartorio here, second and long here. We expect her to put this ball in the air. As her receiver lines up offside, the refs do get her back on there, so they're set up okay. She's got three to the right. She will look that way. Sets up in the pocket. A little bit of pressure in her face. We'll throw it deep to, I believe that's number oh, 20. Oh, she got it. Oh. oh, they're calling that one incomplete. That looked like an incredible effort by Zelinski. I really want to see that one on the replay. I Like when, when Zelinski, oh, here we go. As the ball, let's see if she's able to get that. Oh, uh, no. Good she call by the official. Yeah. Almost able to pin it on her shoulder pad yeah. and make that miraculous catch as, as it just seems like whereas Manitoba chips and chips and chips, Ontario is just trying to hit that big play and hope. And if they did, they would put this game to sleep just to, the, the way their defense is playing. But again, here we go. We talk about, oh. Yeah, timeout there Ontario. We go. Yeah, timeout yep. Ontario. As you saw, saw the head referee in uh, Rob Isbister call that on the field. We'll see here. I don't see Maya Lacombe on the field right now. They're Team Ontario punter, so uh, we'll see if uh, if they're going to keep that offensive on the field or not. It looks like, you know, as we've seen them throughout the day so far, they have been aggressive on third down, whether it's third and 14 or third and short. Uh, they've been going for it, so taking a time out here and try and get their best play drawn up. But then again, they don't crack this one, one or two first downs, and with Turski's leg, you get in that tie ball game position. So this is very crucial as you see with 620 left in this quarter half of game one of this round robin third place tournament of the tournament mm -hmm. here on Saturday um, it'll be interesting to see what happens on this third down for Team Ontario. Yeah I saw Peyton Tursky putting her helmet back on on the sideline over there on the far side so it looks like she'll be ready to go for the next offensive drive here so if Team Antobin can get a big stop here on third and 14 uh, expect for her to be back on the field for her offense and, and try and get that ball going again. Looks like they have something drawn up and we see the the key players come on the field and Dory and Zumblinski the pass catchers and Sartorio with the the arm in at quarterback, and there's your three wide. Yeah, again, we haven't heard Tegan Roy's number yet today. She's made some incredible catches in this tournament. Uh, we'll see here if they look to her. Sartorio will look over the middle. Some tight pressure that time. It's intercepted. Coming back the other way, 31 Pearl Inglis is going to take this all the way for a Team Manitoba touchdown. Defender couldn't, or the offensive player couldn't get her at the end there. And what a great play by Manitoba. That is unbelievable. That would be the worst case scenario for Team Ontario. And, and impressive by Inglis as well, because I know a lot of defenders, knowing it's third down, would just knock it down. But she saw everything upfield. And the bench, the very small bench of Team Manitoba, mm -hmm. goes wild. And now they have the lead. And if they're able to punch this uh, convert through, they'll have a full touchdown lead on Team Ontario. Yeah, this is a big two-point attempt here for Team Manitoba. Last time it was blocked by Hannah Martin. We'll see here if Manitoba can put this one through. It's Tursky. Peyton Tursky ready yeah. to go. Yep, she's ready to kick it. Snap is pretty good. Good job by quarterback that time, but not able to get it on, on the tee quick enough. You know, a little bit of an issue with the snap. I thought she was able to get a hold of it, but a little bit of an issue there, and it's going to limit this lead. Holder's a hard position, and that's why you see most teams have their punter as their holder, but Tursky, as you said, is the all-around uh, weaponized leg of Team Manitoba, and either way, that is an immense 
touchdown for Team Manitoba. And if they could just hold on to this, that is a mag- that is a huge win. And now it's going to be interesting to see how Ontario plays it, if they're going to change things up and try to chip away or they're just going to keep going with those deep shots. Yeah, you know, that's kind of been their bread and butter. I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe try and get the ball in Zemlinski's hands right away again. You know, I mentioned we haven't heard Tegan's Roy uh, name yet. I just see her actually on the sideline um, in her jersey, but not in her equipment. So must have got banged up on that second day of the tournament. So unfortunately, she's not on the field for Ontario, one of their big playmakers. So they've been leaning hard on Zemlinski, kind of gone away from her a little bit, been trying to throw it deep downfield. I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all. The, the coach in me was expecting one of those swing pass or screen passes again. Well, it's funny you mentioned Roy. And in the win over Manitoba, she, she caught all four passes for Sartorio, and including two touchdowns of 34 and 32 yards. And she must have been having a day with, with Dory and Zumlinski kind of taking a lot of that defensive pressure away from her. But uh, when you see Uluwarde and Inglis having to not stress about three star receivers but just two that's a big difference yeah, big difference here as Tursky lines up to kick this ball downfield to team ontario gonna bounce picked up here about the 32 yard line that's cali dory for team ontario good job by pro english to split the defenders and it looks like cali's gonna run out of bounds and i think they're gonna maybe get a hold here with the incredible effort by pro english to earn that call that was incredible pursuit by that defender in inglis as well, push from behind is what they're going to get her for. Get number one on Aaron Campbell of Team Ontario. Yeah, so that one's going to be pushed back. So good, uh, good job by Team Manitoba special teams there. Good kick downfield by Peyton Tursky and pushes Team Ontario all the way back to the 29-yard line now. That's one thing I'm impressed is the pursuit by all these defenders that are on the field. Sometimes it's hard to teach. Um, a lot of players have the tendency to love going east-west, mm-hmm. even if you're a defender, and to teach. You you can't teach north-south. No, we don't. No, you always want to stretch it. You talked about stretching it wide, right? Yeah. Use the sideline. Sideline's your friend, especially when there's only 40 yards of space instead of the usual full wheel di- uh, four f- sorry full field dimensions here on a CFL field. But, yes, yeah, so like great pursuit by these defenders. And there, yeah, oh. there's that screen pass. But this time, I believe that's two number three, Cali Dory. Uh, on the left side there, but good job by Team Manitoba. I think that's a couple or, or loss of one yard going to bring up second and 11. So they're really starting to sniff this out. These defenders, the backfield of Team Manitoba, the defensive backfield, and a great play. I, I was right with the play call, just yes, the wrong player. Just the yeah. wrong player. Maybe yeah. they're just trying to sneak that around. That's right, yeah. Maybe they uh, thought they'd have the same thing here. So as Team Ontario lines up, Marie Sartorio, this time she's got three receivers to the right, Zeminski in the middle. She gets ready for second down here. You see and Zelensky there. Yeah. looks like she's offside on that. A little bit of an issue with the with the uh, cadence there as the, as the pass goes to her and falls incomplete. And it's just funny. Wherever she goes, Mary Grace Ulawarde is right there in her hip pocket. So as the officials here call offside on Team Ontario, we expect Team Manitoba to decline this. Force third and 11. Team Ontario down five now with five minutes left in this game. Two big plays are the difference for Team Manitoba. They had the pick six that we just saw here in the second quarter half by Pearl Inglis, and then you had Delaney Waldner with a kickoff return touchdown early in the first. All right, so third and 11 as Team Ontario will go for this here as she looks to pass, and she will look to Zinlinski deep over the middle. That time it looks like Mary Grace is gonna get called for a PI. We were wondering when that was gonna happen. Uh, a lot of those jump balls, once in a while you end up with a pass interference and Uluarde ended up not looking back at this one and we, you see this at all levels of football when the defensive back doesn't even, they get kind of tunnel vision and they forget to look back because that's one of the toughest skills to teach a defensive back is that. Yeah, you know, she had nice coverage on the play. She was right there in the hip of Zelensky. Just couldn't get ahead around there before Zelensky went for the ball. Took away her right to the ball, so the official is going to call that and is going to bring up a first and 10 here for Team Ontario. So a big penalty as time ticking down. That's one of the benefits of an all-passing offense is the time is not as much of an enemy as it usually is. Whoa. Team Ontario, she's going to have to get on the line. They don't have an end currently. A good job by the coach there to get her on the line. As Satorio takes the snap. This time going to look right down the middle here herself. Going to break a tackle. 
uses the official as a blocker and finally pushed out of bounds there, but not after a first down. We've seen Sartario rarely use her legs, but when she does, it's been incredibly efficient for Team Ontario, and she just found a lot of space in the middle of the field until Caitlin McMahon was able to finally force her out of bounds. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that. She, it's, not, it's not something that they, they ask her to do a lot of, but when she does, she's very successful with that. Obviously a great athlete, both running the ball and throwing. So as Sotero gets set here for first and 10, she's got three receivers to the right. Going to look over the middle this time again, throwing deep downfield, lots of air on it, but double oh, coverage wow. on the play and a nice job by that trailing defender. I think that's one of the D linemen <laughs> making an incredible play. <laughs> as ranging all the way back, it looks like it was Caitlin McMahon and Delaney Waldner both on the coverage on that as, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. As we, it's, it's, it's easy to call the Manitoba numbers because we know who they all are. Yep. It's just, it's, it's, they've just been doing such strong work in that defensive backfield because Ontario has taken every shot they can in that middle of the field. Brings up second and 10 here, ball in the 51. Three minutes, 45 seconds left in this game. Sotaro's going to take it. They will ask her to keep it herself this time off the right side as the defenders are going with their receivers. Gets by, nice tackle by Mary Grace, but again, another first down. She has just taken it upon her own shoulders and legs as Sartorio, and I think after everything well that's the way the offense is set up they're just pushing the three receivers and forcing four defensers defensemen defensive players back deep and that gives her the open space yeah you know we saw the receivers there good job running their defenders off lots of space for sartorio there to get the first down this time lining up again in the gun three receivers to the left this time first and ten We're gonna take this three minutes left in the game but this time right up the middle she's being chased by number 66 there another good tackle there McMahon has stepped up in this game as time ticking down. Now is the time for Team Manitoba to make a stop, but this is now three big runs by Sartorio. Nice tackle Ooh. there. You know, I think you can kind of see the uh, the fatigue maybe starting to take its toll a little bit on Team Manitoba. Yeah, and as you see them on the ground, a lot of hands on hips and on the knees, and you even see the referee and the officials coming to talk to some of the players asking if they're okay. Uh, it is smoking hot here. Uh, this is your as gross as a prairie day as you will get. And I don't even want to look at the temperature. I don't want to step my foot no. on the field. No, we're these, these, yeah, we're, we're soft. We're fortunate enough to be up here in the, although open, air-conditioned booth here at beautiful Mosaic Stadium. But, you know, these, these girls are, are warriors playing in the sun. You know, it's, it's about 32 degrees out, and then you add the turf. It's another 10 degrees or so. so. And then add the humidity. It's probably 40 out there. Yeah. So, well, if they're getting ready to play in the SEC, they can go play at the University of Florida right That's now. They're right. used to the yeah. heat. Yeah, they'll be ready to go. Uh, as we see a couple of Team Manitoba defenders walking off the field there, I believe that is uh, number 60. Uh, I believe she's 66. Uh, she's 68 on my roster, yeah. but I believe that's, yeah, Caitlin McMahon there. Yeah. And then uh, also Mary Grace Oluwade, uh, both taking a knee on that play. So both are off the field here. Uh, look to see if Team Ontario can take advantage of that. They're two, two of their top defensive players, so a lot of pressure on their two defensive linemen in Pilgrim and Muhammad. And Delaney Walder, number nine as well, is going to have to do a lot of work. It's a blitz. Yeah, Sotero, nice job reading that blitz. Tucking it and running herself. Finally pushed out of bounds there, finally by number nine. Calista Andrews for team, or sorry, Delaney Waldner, but not before another first down. And she took advantage of all of that space on the blitzing linebacker. And that's three straight runs by Sartorio. And I have a feeling we're going to see one or two more by the Team Ontario quarterback. We'll see if they look to maybe get the ball in Zemlinski's hands with Mary Grace off the field here. You know, we've mentioned that she's been trailing her. So it'll be interesting to see here if they try and maybe look to that screen pass or try and get something deep over the middle like they've been trying as Marie Sotero gets ready here. First and 10 ball in the 18. She will look to pass that time. Going over the middle, I believe that's number three, Callie Smith. We're going to fall a little short there incomplete. Yeah, Sotario was going she didn't step into that throw she had a receiver wide open but some solid pressure by team manitoba forced her backwards as you you see the great another blitz as again as she passed off her back foot that's hard to do it as i said at any level but 
to try to hit a, a receiver over the middle off your back foot is a tough ask. Yeah, intended for Cowie Dory. Also listed as a QB, but doing great job out there as a receiver. Obviously, we've seen her a couple of nice plays on special teams as well. As Sartorio gets ready here, second to ten. Ball still on the 18. This time she will look to run again herself off the left side. Nice block by her receiver, but a great job by Manitoba to get off and, and make a uh, big tackle there and forcing third down. They stretched it to the outside and Sartorio wasn't able to cash in this time as a great play by the defensive lineman in Georgia Pilgrim almost got to it and then finally the star Pearl Inglis who had the pick six for the go-ahead touchdown so far made the final tackle All right, so here we go. up a big third and five only a minute and a half left in this game here for Team Ontario we'll see if they look to keep it on the ground with Sartorio or put it in the air. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just asked Sartori to get this with her feet again as she sends three to the right this time. Going to line up, take the snap. She will look to pass this time over the middle to Callie Dory again. And that one's going to be caught for a Team Ontario touchdown. Impressive because there was a player in her face in Chloe spencer Naren, but Sartorio was able to get that ball away. And there's your go-ahead touchdown with only a buck 13 left in this Second quarter half. That's right. We mentioned Callie Dory doing it on specials and on offense there. Great job. You can see she was a little exhausted after that drive, but she earned that touchdown and puts her team currently up one here as they look like they're going to just go for one uh, on the extra point here. As she was able to back off one of the top defenders on Team Manitoba and Delaney Waldner, and they are going to go for the, the, for the single point. One minute here, 13 seconds left. Time won't run until the kickoff. Of course, as Sartorio looks to the right, to Zemlitsky that time a little high, and that one's going to fall incomplete. So that will keep it 13-12 for Team Ontario up over Team Manitoba here. Now this kickoff return and kickoff coverage is going to be crucial. As you see, just the, the ball just a little too high for Zemlinski on that convert. This kickoff return is going to be the game. You know, it'll be interesting to see who they send back there. I know that Pearl Inglis has done a great job returning all tournament. Um, but after that long defensive drive, we'll see if they have anyone that's a little bit fresher to be back there or not, or if they just ask Pearl to tough it out and, and get the best that she can. Pearl Inglis and Delaney Wald Waldner will be your two returners as Waldner had a 73-yard kickoff return just two seconds after Zemlinski had her 45-yard reception for the touchdown in that first quarter half. So it looks like they're gonna send back Mary Grace Oluarde for the return here. They've got three back there. I believe that's number nine, Delaney Waldner. Uh, I can't. I think that might be McKenna Hampson on the far side, their main running back. So we'll see here as Cameron Zemlinski lines up to kick this ball off for Team Ontario. Just over a minute left in this game. Good kick right nice to Mary Grace, kick. nice job. Off her hands, it's gonna roll back behind her. She has to go back and get it. And a great job by Team Ontario. Oh, she's gonna keep her feet moving, but good pursuit there at the end there. She almost broke that. Almost did, but it was great coverage by Team Ontario to really keep her in the middle. And the first one there was Erin Campbell. We didn't have to say her name at all during this game, but when she had to make a play, she does for Team Ontario. And that, that was incredible kick coverage. And now it's going to be interesting. Yeah, you know, with the way that Team Manitoba's offense is set up, they're going to line up in that I-form again. They haven't really had a lot of long, big plays. So with about a minute left, we'll see here if they can try and break one. As they hand it off to McKenna Hampson that time, she gets some good space off the right side. Uh, only going to go for about six yards, though. And again, great work by Team Ontario to keep it to the outside. And... Yes, this power running game is great to, to chew up time and take the pressure off the defense, but when you need a point or two, you're in tough. Yeah, Violet Kirk there for Team Ontario does a nice job on the tackle. She will turn to hand it off to McKenna Hamilton, who's brought down in the backfield for a big loss. That was an impressive play by Isabel Amble. The Cumberland Panther, as you could tell with the blue helmet, watch her just shed the block, go right upfield, slip the block of the fullback in Tursky and make the tackle. That's a great play. You're right. You know, avoid that lead blocker. We know uh, how good of a blocker Tursky is, so a great job by her to avoid that and make a big play here. Going to force third and eight with about 48 seconds as Team Manitoba takes their last time out here. Um, you know, it, it's probably safe to say that this game, or this last play here is going to be for the game. Yeah, and then after that it's victory formation and move on. 
And for Team Manitoba, if they don't get this first down, that's tough. You get two big plays by your defense and by your special teams. And if you say you get a pick six and a kickoff return touchdown, that's a great advantage. That is, yeah. So line up in the eye form here. Going to wait for the ref to whistle it in. We're now good. Jada Bolton's going to have a little bit of a trouble with that snap. She's going to look to pass this time off the right side to McKenna Hampson, but great job by Hannah Martin for Team Ontario with some great coverage, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. First pass of the game, and it happened with just 43 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Team Ontario rightfully Super celebrating pumped, yeah. Yeah, as they are as we mentioned their first time at a women's tournament like this especially uh great to see them go celebrate with their injured teammates great job by their defense there 43 seconds left on the clock here we just expect them to it's funny to say we expect them to run the ball who knows <laughs> we we'll haven't see. seen them run the ball yeah, by, well, from the quarterback we haven't seen Myla Lacombe come back out i believe she's currently just on the sideline in the shade um so we'll see here if they maybe just look to hand it off or sartario just keep it herself and try and wind this game down and uh, like a true spread offense, not going under yep. center. <laughs> nope, they will look to pass to Zemlinski off the left side, and that one's going to fall incomplete, and we'll keep some time on the clock here. Live and die. That's right, yeah. They're going to stick with it. It got them this far, right? So I, I, I love it. You're going to live and die by it like, a, like how you should with that kind of offense. Don't change. Because I guess if you do change and go under center and do things you don't, usually do mm -hmm, run the issue you know i'm surprised maybe don't see sartario just keep it herself there and, and keep the clock moving but the line up here second and 10 39 seconds left in the game here sartario will take the snap this time she will toss it out left Ooh. almost uh i want to say almost intercepted there or or whatever it would look like a forward toss would have been an interception by manitoba there nice job you know they they don't have any timeouts left though but we will force a third down the manitoba defensive lineman especially on the ends, were really able to collapse all game. And that's Georgia Pilgrim with the tackle. Shayla Muhammad is also the other defensive lineman for Team Manitoba. And you talked about how good the Manitoba line play is from top to bottom. And if you're the Manitoba program, you see these two athletes, I would be just tickled absolutely you see georgia pilgrim being helped off again here uh hopefully she's all right so they they'll send another defender on i i don't expect uh, team ontario to punt here it's not something they've been interested in doing too much today so uh, no they're going to keep their offense on the field here and if manitoba can get a stop they're going to have a chance here for a couple plays the time will run so uh it, you know they might only have time for a play or two but they got to make this stop here on third and 15 and we'll see what happens i would assume well they're going still with the three offensive linemen something we haven't seen all game until the last few plays they're just going to let this drain and then sartorio there it is yeah there's the run herself has one person to beat and she does she's got lots of space off the left side there's going to head towards the sideline and a good tackle by mary, mary grace Oluare, but not before sartorio gets the first down that is your game winning first down and that is how the game was won here in the second quarter half for team ontario they were not able to connect for the majority of the game on a lot of their passes, so Sartorio took it into her own hands, her own legs as well, as she will be the leading rusher for Team Ontario and then finally able to cap it off with that first down run. Now we'll see her go under center under for the only yeah, time. Exactly, yeah. the only play, the old victory formation here, Sartorio will take it, take a knee, and take the win over Team Manitoba in the first game of the final day here at the 2022 Football Canada Under-18 Women's National Championship. Number three, Ontario beats number five, Manitoba. And just one quick note on that game, we, we knew it was gonna be tight coming in, and I say kudos to Team Manitoba for really stepping up in this game, shorthanded, and that was fantastic and sets up a great day of football. Absolutely. So that will bring us up to our next game. We have number five again, Team Manitoba, getting ready to play against number four, Team New Brunswick. Kickoff will be in about 35 minutes. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again for our second game.
Huh? There's a bunch of insects today apparently. Yeah, like they're 